Hey guys, sorry about the crazy messy desk, but I'm working today and it's just what happens. Um, I had a friend ask about setting stones in metal clay, so I figured it'd be a good opportunity to just make a quick little video for you guys. That's something I've been meaning to do anyway. Um, so her question was, stones that cannot withstand the heat of the kiln, how would you set those in metal clay? There are a few different ways. You can always make your piece and then solder on a bezel or make your own custom bezel afterwards. This is a uh, piece I made out of a drawing my son did for me. The bezel was soldered on in this case and then the stone was put on afterwards. Um, this is another piece of mine that I actually embedded the stone. This particular stone was able to take the heat of the kiln so I more or less just pushed it into the clay before firing it and everything comes out fine. But then we have a selection of stones, some really cool stones that can't take the heat. So what do you do in that case? Um, every, let me start off by saying every clay has a different shrinkage rate. You make, you make your piece and you put it in the kiln and it'll shrink down a different percentage. What I use mostly is for my copper, I use Hatter's Clay and friendly copper which comes in a powder so you actually have to mix the mix the clay yourself it has about a 25 percent shrinkage rate for my bronze I use bronze clay which has a shrinkage of about 17 to 20 percent um, for silvers I use a lot of different things it depends on the project PMC3 is a good one it is 99.9 .9 percent silver shrinkage about 12 to 15 percent. PMC Pro has a shrinkage of about 15 to 20 percent and this is .900 silver. I'll use this when I really need some extra strength on something. Um, let me see, PMC Sterling I use that a lot as well. 15 to 20 percent shrinkage on that. And the Sterling, the Pro, um, the PMC3 and the bronze all come in clay form, but the copper that I use comes in powder. There's lots of other brands, lots of different types. I have, I'd show you under my desk, but it looks even crazier. Where I have my organizer, I've got lots of different brands. Um, some come in powders, some are clays. Um, so yeah, lots of different things out there, and you kind of have to tweak the firing of each one to get it just perfectly. It's a lot of math. <laughs> So, let's discuss these stones again. If you were to set a stone after firing your metal clay piece, what you could essentially do is take your stone, photocopy it, and then blow it up by your shrinkage rate. Say your shrinkage rate for that clay is 20%. You would blow up your image 20%, make your metal clay piece, and then make your bezel that 20% larger. So then when everything is fired, it shrinks down and you're left with just the metal. It should essentially, um, it, should, it should fit really nicely. I haven't tried it that way. I have my computer, my scanner, all my other stuff upstairs, which is away from all, all of my dirty uh, work stuff downstairs. I like to keep them separate so I don't go back and forth if I don't have to. Another way would be to make a mold. And if you've ever ordered a dog nose pendant from me or something like that, you have probably gotten this in the mail. You need this together in equal parts. Push together whatever. Sorry, my desk is such a mess. I've been working a lot. Um, push whatever you want to mold into the, into the thing here. And then after it dries, you're left with like a rubbery, flexible mold of the product. Okay. So we've got our mold. At this point, what we would do is pour some casting powder. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Pour some casting powder in there. You have to mix up the powder. And once that dries, about two hours later, you're left with something that looks like this. Now this can withstand the heat. So what you would do is create your product in clay and make your bezel, which you could either make out of already made bezel wire or you could make it out of PMC paper, um, which I have somewhere. This 
it's like really really thin metal clay you can actually use hole punches and stuff on it I'm just now starting to use this so hopefully there'll be more more um, more to come but you can make bezel wire out of that or you can make it out of regular clay a few different things so you would attach that to your metal clay piece you would put this your your um, kind of fake stone your placeholder in it and fire in the kiln and this will not allow it to shrink past this placeholder here it can withstand the heat so at that point when you take it out you can dissolve the placeholder in water and kind of scoop it out scrub it out and then you should be left with just the bezel and your piece um, and the idea is it doesn't always work that way uh, you should be able to just pop your stone in close up that bezel at that point and then uh, continue on with whatever you need to do I'm still working on this one a little bit it's got a little bit of cleaning up to do but I did use a placeholder method on this one I will tell you I had to go back and um, fix a bunch of things because I didn't account for this little stone I was able to embed this stone it could withstand the heat but I didn't account for when the when it shrunk that it would pop this bezel wire out all out of yeah it just messed it up so I had to go back and uh, fix some things on this one and I'm still working on it it's kind of a side project um, another thing we would use casting powder for these are called ring pellets I'm not sure if you can see but the size of the ring is down in there it's kind of dirty and you would pour that same casting powder back into the ring pellets or the ring pellet mold and once it's dry you are left with pellets in several different sizes and it'll have the size uh, on the bottom and printed on the bottom I started using these some sometimes I'll use them sometimes I don't um, trying to get a good one to show you see it's a size 8 there so you would make your, your ring a little bit larger than you actually wanted it to be in the end put this um, in the ring and then fire it and it shouldn't shrink down any smaller than this the problem I have with this is a lot of the clays you have to fire in a charcoal carbon which is like really finely grind charcoal if you can picture that so it's a little bit rocky um, and it will get in between the ring and this and will sometimes leave little indents on the inside of the ring or make it ugh, just I don't know I don't I don't like it all that much um, so at this point I just make the ring I try to shoot for it being about a half size smaller than what I want it and that will allow me enough room to really sand out the inside nicely and leave a smooth finish and then be left with um, the size I intended so I hope this was informative for you guys I hope you enjoyed the video if anyone has any idea why I could not film this on my um, iPhone 6 please let me know I tried to record it played back the video and you cannot hear anything but fuzziness in my voice very faint in the background uh, case is not on it volumes all the way up I don't know what else to say <laughs> so comment below and let me know if you have any ideas on that alright thanks guys